Can you guys hear me? Okay, so I'm gonna be the downer of the evening. <laughs> um, but it's also gonna be, I'm gonna be the, the person who perhaps, thank you very much, Karen, you, the, you, and the work you're doing at Meta is fantastic. I'm also the person who may be able to provide some tips on what Karen suggested our call to action to be, which is how do we actually move that needle in terms of diversity and inclusion in our community in the tech sector, okay? So the topic of today is discomfort as our ally. Where the hell did that come from, some of you might say? And I have to, a pardon for the personal photos on the stage here, but I have to say before I begin my talk that I am not an HR expert, I am not a sociologist, I'm not a political economist, I haven't studied um, women's studies, um, I don't know all the ins and outs of the stats around um, inclusion and diversity in the tech sector. So this talk really had to come from a different place for me. Um, yes, I am a woman of color and I've been in the tech sector for a very, very long time, mostly all my career. But really my sort of, I'm, I'm kind of not even comfortable calling them insights, but my questions that I'd like to share with you and I'd like to continue to speak with you guys about after the, after the whole event tonight is really um, based on this intergenerational moment that I find myself in, you know? As a woman of color who's been in the tech sector trapped in technology, hence that picture, that's a Liebel um, um, conceptual art piece. Um, as a woman who's a mother now with a seven year, uh, eight year old son, um, who is very much um, embroiled in tech, and so I have to constantly think about how to um, manage and negotiate his relationship with the world and technology, okay? And as the very, very lucky daughter of a woman who, when she retired, um, founded the Center for Mindfulness Studies. Um, and so she's the one that's been kind of guiding a lot of my understanding about how we might want to go about changing the world because that's been her core mandate all her life, um, is how can I change the world to be just that little better place. So today, we really wanna talk about how do we move from this current reality where we have um, you know, a, a, a political, uh, economic, technology sector that's rife with inequalities, that's definitely rife with e exclusion, um, that's not as, as diverse as it should be, okay? And how do we move from that current reality to a much more open reality, to a much more inclusive one, diverse one, understanding, as um, you very nicely said, Carolyn, that a lot of these issues are systemic. And so I'd like to talk about the three types of discomfort I think we're gonna need to embrace, frankly, going back to your point, Karen, that it comes down to each individual um, in order for us to actually move that needle, okay? So the first set of discomfort that I think uh, we all can relate to is physical discomfort. You know, we are all uh, uh, of the mind that we don't want things to be too far or the public transport's too crowded or I don't wanna be too late or I'm getting up too early so I have to figure out how to get there. Um, things are too complicated, it's too tall, it's too short, etc. It's essentially too much trouble. And tech has essentially provided us with a whole host of conveniences that will fix this particular, these sets of physical discomforts, okay? You guys know all, you all know where I'm going next, so I'm just gonna go there. Oops, I do have to press hard, okay? Who can spot that thing that should be deleted on the screen? <laughs> this is my cell phone today, and this is a tension that I've had to deal with like up until this moment, actually. So how many people here still have Uber on their phones? Come on, I do, come on, let's just see. So that's not too bad actually, right? So there are quite a few of you have already deleted Uber, um, but this is one of those issues that we all grapple with, which is do we allow the convenience um, that Uber provides, the fact that I don't have to pull out my crazy card at the end of the ride, the fact that it's easy and it's a lot cheaper, um, or presumably cheaper, do I let those types of conveniences trump the myriad of issues 
that have plagued that particular company. Um, not least of it, which is the sexual harassment lawsuits, um, the IP stealing lawsuits, the alleged IP stealing lawsuits, et cetera. At what point do we decide that in physical inconvenience, physical discomfort, is something that is actually way more comfortable than the actual discomfort of, of, of supporting a company that we all, I think, for many of us, um, feel a little bit, you know, at best ambivalent about, at worst really shameful about having to support. And so I think that's a, that's a particular form of discomfort that we all need to deal with because the technologies that we're building are actually meant to continuously add conveniences to our lives and to make our lives easier. And we need to figure out how to balance the individual can more convenient life that we want to live with a more social collective life and social society that we want to build for the future. So this is a quote from an artist um, from 1993, which is a set of uh, essays that um, uh, sort of asked a bunch of theorists and artists to think about um, how to rethink technologies. And what I really love about this particular quote is this notion that, yeah, you know, technology is going to be uh, absorbed by exploitive capitalist forces. We, we've already seen this, right? But what's more important is we have the capacity to rechannel that into more productive modes of not just singular, but collective becoming. I think that's a really powerful phrase, this notion of collective becoming, a society we want to create together. And so how do we balance that need for convenience and what technology provides us with the equally important um, need to make these corporations and frankly these technologies more accountable um, for what they're doing. The second type of discomfort I want to talk about is social discomfort. Um, a lot of social discomfort can really be um, sort of uh, framed in terms of we just like to hang out with our own kind, you know? And that's a kind of socio-biological, psycho, um, almost automatic reaction that most people have. You know, they just want to hang with the zombies. If you're a zombie, you want to hang out with the zombies. If you're a wizard, you want to hang out with the wizards, etc. And so the, the discomfort, the inconvenience um, around having to actually open yourself up to the other or um, open yourself up to uh, someone who doesn't have the same lived experience as you can be very inconvenient to most people, right? And what's really problematic about this particular form of social discomfort is that it's an automatic reaction that we've actually um, uh, integrated into how we view the world. And so a lot of this discomfort um, is being represented through what's called unconscious bias. So if you just open up Google right now or do searches, you'll see a host of Silicon Valley companies really actually <laughs> what they've done, in fact, is they've invested in a lot of apps that help them figure out how to not have unconscious bias. Um, and so they're all kind of trying to work towards how do we make sure that we have blind sort of um, uh, studies, blind juries, so that the people that we would hire into our corporations are not being um, prejudiced by the unconscious biases that we have, our need to be with our own kind. One of the difficulties about the notion of unconscious bias, however, is that it may not actually be around this notion of tribes necessarily or our own kind, but it's also the fact that typically we also have a predilection towards only choosing people from within our own networks. So that's not just, it's, so it's not just an issue of um, explicit prejudice or explicit bias against a, an ethnic group or a gender group. It could simply be that you're not even getting access to those types of people because the networks that you're working with are the familiar networks that you're in. So there's been a lot of really interesting articles written about how, for example, um, Google and Facebook and tech recruiters typically go to Stanford and Yale, but they never go to Howard University, or they never go to Ryerson University, or they never go to these kinds of places. So they're looking for people within the networks that are familiar to them. And I thought this was interesting sort of mapping because 
Uh, one is today's article by um, J.D. Vance, who's t uh, who wrote Hillbilly Elegy, and he talks about how the hillbillies, which is the uh, white working class, aren't as networked as the financial elites. And so he's, t he's, refra he's reframing that conversation in that way. And then on, this, on the other side, you've got the notion of Silicon Valley not hiring enough black coders. So this notion of network to facts and network communities, um, typically being hom homogeneous kind of um, spaces, uh, occurs everywhere, right? And the last thing that I think, you know, in terms of social discomfort, is often we're too embarrassed to stand out. So even though we may be aware that um, something is not quite right, do we want to be that type of person to put ourselves into that situation where we're the one that's looked at or, or um, uh, thought as having said something inappropriate or um, done the kind of, uh, made too much of a fuss of something, right? But as we can see, and thanks for the March photos earlier, you know, people are starting to stand up because it's time. We got to evolve. This is my son. This is the Toronto's March. Um, and I love that photo of the dinosaur, and we never got the name of the person in it. But, um, <laughs> but we have to evolve. We don't really have a choice. And I think part of the key, part, the, part of the, the issue that we have to grapple with is that because a lot of these things are automatic, you know, our discomfort is automatically arises, our reaction automatically um, kind of uh, gets put out there, oftentimes what we actually need, even though we can kind of maybe recognize that this discomfort can be an ally and help us recognize that, you know, we're in this position of needing to maybe sit with it, Oftentimes what we actually need is the institutional and governmental regulatory frameworks to help us get there. And so it's really critical that we don't just assume that these are just, you know, we should just be like happy and like friendly or, you know, chilled out people. That in fact what we need to demand is some kind of institutional change because only then can real change happen. And so things like um, this next discomfort is where the, the pedal hits the metal. And this discomfort is material discomfort, okay? Because at the end of the day, the moment we start to um, demand regulatory change, what that really means is that it becomes expensive, it's unmeritocratic. That's the first time I've ever used that word on a slide. <laughs> she used pussy, I used unmeritocratic. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't even know, is that actually a word? I'm not sure. But essentially, the discomfort is it's very hard to share. We still have sharing problems, you know, even though, um, you know, we've grown up, you know, we're no longer toddlers, I do think that people still have this difficult problem of sharing because we only have a certain finite resources in the world. And so if we do decide that these kinds of issues need to be addressed, that we need to have 45% women or 50% women, that means that we would probably have to have quotas. I'm doing that because apparently it's illegal in the states to have quotas. So, and this is like affirmative action type stuff, right? So Intel, this is a great article that people should read um, uh, that just came out this spring um, in the Atlantic, why is Silicon Valley so awful to women? And they go through this whole like, this is what everyone's doing, unconscious bias training, blah, 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 et cetera. Dum. And then at the bottom of the article, they basically said, you know what? The only thing that worked is when Intel, Intel attached bonuses to having people, 40% um, uh, um, employees come from women and diverse communities, female and diverse communities. And indeed, the article sort of suggests what happens when that occurs. So, I'm one minute away. My point is, discomfort is our ally. Don't run away from these things, because if you're not feeling the pain of, the, the pain of physical discomfort, if you're not feeling the pain of social discomfort, and if you're not feeling the pinch of material discomfort, then you're probably not doing anything far enough to actually change the world.